Hey everybody, 68 years ago today, on July 21st, 1952, at 4.52 in the morning, the White Wolf Fault, which runs roughly northeast southwest along here down this canyon behind me, slipped, causing a 7.5 earthquake, and uh, the epicenter was a few miles back behind us there, and uh, it did quite a bit of damage, but most of it was localized right here in this area. One of the reasons for that is because the fault runs along pretty remote areas once it comes out of the uh, San Joaquin Valley. Uh, Arvin is about the only town that really lies along its path, and uh, so there wasn't a lot of stuff to get damaged, although uh, from what I've read, there were quite a few uh, land shifts and cracks that had opened up in some of the remote areas. But uh, anyway, uh, the place that it did damage, the things that it did damage was the railroad in the Bealeville area. And uh, I'm gonna go over uh, some of the places that were damaged, some of the things they did uh, that the railroad did after the earthquake to get things going again and uh, some temporary stuff and how it led to some permanent line changes. All right, let's go get into it. All right, this is the uh, east portal of Tunnel 3. You will know, recognize it from some of my other videos, some of you will. And uh, prior to the earthquake, where I am standing right now is about where the east portal of Tunnel 3 used to be, except that it was about 25 feet beyond where the track is now is on the other side of that uh, concrete block retaining wall. You can see the cut right there. That's where it used to go. The uh, east end of the tunnel was too badly damaged to be repaired. So they made the decision to daylight that. For all of you who don't know, uh, you've heard me use the term daylight the tunnel. All that means is they got rid of it. They blew it up, opened it up, and uh, either made a cut out of it, as they did in here, or leveled it off and did something else with it. But they got rid of the tunnel. But uh, they immediately began the excavation work. You can see that up here. It's pretty extensive. They had to get rid of a lot of... Uh, material to make that happen and the uh, track alignment like I said was further over it was a little straighter and it went into tunnel 4 right there okay this is the ruins of the abandoned tunnel number 4 tunnel number 3 is right up there around the curve behind that hill from my pickup and as you can see, tunnel number four was uh, extensively damaged in the middle here, and it was very badly damaged down towards the other end as well. The railroad determined it would be easier to just uh, abandon it, bypass it, and so they cut the entirety of this hill, which used to go over there to where the fence is, they just knocked all that down. They, uh, the track out of Tunnel 3, as I said a while ago, was a little straighter run into the tunnel. They just sharpened that curve a little bit, brought the tracks this way. And uh, I read that uh, in the center of the tunnel here, the tracks, there were parts of the tracks that were bowed up uh, up to four feet off the uh, ground with the ties still attached to them. Uh, it was probably a pretty amazing sight. And Tunnel 4 had also moved about three feet to the uh, west towards Tunnel 3. And uh, I'm sure that that break in the middle had something to do with that. And then down about where, uh, about the middle of this curve, uh, I'm going to post the picture alongside this piece here. And this is what the tracks look like in the approach 
to uh, tunnel number four on the east end. You can see the telltale here tilted over to the right on the approach to tunnel three and the tracks 22 feet off center. Here's a shot from above tunnel four looking towards tunnel three with the excavation work over tunnel three already in progress. The ground moved there, it shifted laterally 10 feet and uh, which buckled the tracks, that bow in the tracks. The tracks were 22 feet off center from where they were prior. And uh, that's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, when you consider you know, all the times I've seen all the track work they've done and derailments and everything. Huh? Got a BNSF coming down the hill. Trying to get this thing shot today and there's just so many trains and I did not come here to shoot trains. But anyway, the tracks were 22 feet off center there and that is, that's just astounding, the force that nature has. We're powerless against it. But anyway, let's uh, move on up uh, towards the uh, other end of uh, Tunnel 4 and up to Tunnel 5. All right, that is Tunnel 4 down there. And you can see it's kind of buried now, but if you look really closely, I'll see if I can get this up without getting too shaky. You can see that concrete work at the very end, at this end. And that's where the uh, east portal of tunnel number four was. Came out of the tunnel on a curve and followed the edge of that hill right there. And then went to the outside of that tree, then to the inside of those trees. It's hard to see, but the hill, you can still see the walls of the cut along the edge of the hills there. And it went behind those trees, followed the contour of the hill out and then tied in to the uh, main line down there about where that curve is on the other side of that far oiler. And uh, there were also multiple landslides all along this hill through this curve here and out all along to the end of that hill there. That is looking up toward the uh, head of Clear Creek Ravine, okay, where this fill is built over Clear Creek during the earthquake uh, in two different places. The ground had collapsed three to four feet where this fill had shaken itself down and left the rails suspended in one place and dipped in the other from what I've read. But uh, anyway, and that is looking down Clear Creek. You can see where the culvert comes out down there. All right. Move on up to uh, Tunnel 5. All right, we've moved up from where the uh, fill had caved in to the west portal of Tunnel Number 5. Now I will uh, put a link in the uh, description below of the uh, two-part piece I did on the history of the tunnels between Bakersfield and Tash. We'll go over this again real quickly. Up there you can see the dates stamped above the portal in uh, the concrete up there of 1876 when the tunnel was originally built and 1952 when it was rebuilt. Tunnel 5 was extensively damaged and obviously much too long to uh, daylight. This tunnel is 1175 feet long. Uh, just inside the tunnel at about the 200 foot mark, uh, you'll see in these photographs, uh, where the rail had shifted to the left as the uh, wall of the tunnel was actually lifted up by the movement of the earth and the rails went under the wall of the tunnel and the tunnel wall set back down on top of the rails. Uh, it was about 15 feet off center line where it did that. Also, at about the 600 foot mark inside the tunnel and about the 950 foot mark, there were two complete uh, cave-ins where the tunnel had collapsed and it was completely blocked 
with uh, dirt and rocks and whatever else. And that necessitated a shoe fly that had to be built across Clear Creek Ravine over there. I'll stop over there and show you where that was. They began uh, work on getting everything put back together uh, the next afternoon. And by the two days, by the, by the 23rd, they had all kinds of equipment already hauled up here in place. And uh, it, it's important to remember that back then, there were no access roads up here. In 1952, they didn't have gang trucks, and uh, most maintainers didn't have pickups. So there was no reason to have access roads. They just came in here on motor cars, and uh, the track department had uh, actual motor cars that seated uh, quite a few people. I, I think they could seat up to 12 people on some of them. And they pull trailers with pieces of rail or switches or whatever they needed to do. And they came in here by rail, as did the signal department. And uh, these access roads weren't here until after the earthquake. And they cut all those roads to get the equipment in here. And you can see up there, that's Highway 58. Way up above as you're driving towards Bakersfield from Tehachapi. You go along that little cut, you can look down here and see Tunnel 5 where I'm standing. Looks pretty cool. Okay, uh, we've moved up a little ways from Tunnel 5 to where uh, the shoe fly was. It went around the side of that hill there and where it came out, you can see the road there. When it came out from behind that hill, it just kind of went about where that road there is cut down in there. Uh, it went off of there and they built that fill on a 15 degree curve over that way and it went about where all that uh, washed out area is over there and uh, about to the right you see those two trees over there it went just to the right of that and completed its curve and tied back in to the main line right over there about where that hill is. This is a drawing of the uh, shoe fly and the original main line. I got this out of the book Tehachapi by John Signor who actually drew this map too. Here are a couple of photographs of the uh, construction of the shoe fly before actually this is during the construction. You can see how much equipment they had up there. And this is when they were finished. You can't see the fill across Clear Creek, but uh, it was really cool. This is also from John Signor's book, Tehachapi. Now when they uh, were done with the uh, repairs on Tunnel 5, which is around the curve of that hill down there, you can see the tracks go to it. When they were finished with that, and open everything back up. They left the shoe fly in place and we used it for an access road until was it 2016 or 2017. We had some huge rainstorms come through and they actually washed the uh, side of the shoe fly out. The whole thing was falling apart as you can see in this picture. And uh, it's incredible that none of that, you, you can see absolutely none of the old shoe fly. It's all gone. And that was a lot of dirt, but they got it out of here. I don't know what they did with all of it, but those guys are amazing. All right, we'll head on up uh, towards the other end of Tunnel 5. All right, this is the east portal of Tunnel Number 5. And uh, according to what I've read, uh, this end of Tunnel 5 down to where the uh, last cave-in was and just this side of that was completely undamaged. All the damage was from about the 950 foot plug down to the uh, west portal. This is the west end or the north end of the siding of Cliff. Uh, I've got some videos of trains control points. I'll put that in a playlist. You can check out all the trains control points. But prior to the earthquake, this was single track. And uh, the uh, west portal of Tunnel 6 was just beyond where the uh, setback signals are there. 
And at that time, you see the it goes around the curve there. The west end of cliff was on the other side of the tunnel. Uh, tunnel six was damaged uh, pretty badly, so they daylighted it and extended the siding of cliff down to where it is right now. Also, uh, tunnel seven and tunnel eight were also pretty severely damaged, but uh, but were repairable. And uh, I'm not going to drive up to those tunnels. They're very difficult to get into. Uh, but uh, those tunnels both had bulging walls in front of, I think it's, and uh, three boulders that weighed approximately 60 tons each rolled off the side of the hill and ended up on the tracks on the uh, west side of Tunnel 7. I could find no pictures of that. I just read about it. But uh, the shoe fly was... When it came out of tunnel six, about where the uh, setback signals are now, the shoe fly split off here and went right out there. You can see the road where it curved off around that way and ran, went around the side of the hill to where we were, where the uh, fill was across Clear Creek Ravine. One of the other uh, things that I wanted to mention about all this uh, carnage from the earthquake was that no trains were uh, caught in any tunnels, no trains were damaged. But just minutes before the quake, the westbound number 55 mail train had just cleared tunnel three. Uh, and when the quake hit, the train was down between uh, Bealville and Allard. Uh, those two are tied together now, and that is about where I am right now, between where those two would have been. Bealville is up there behind me and uh, Allard's up in front of me. But uh, that train was uh, caught there. The signals all went to red. So the train was stopped at the signals at Allard and stuck there until they got that fixed and started running trains through there again. And they opened it back up August 22nd. And this was the first passenger train to go through and it is crossing the fill on the shoe fly. All right, well, one of the things that I forgot to mention is back on the other side of Tunnel 5 on the fill across Clear Creek, uh, you heard me mention that uh, that fill had shaken itself down three to four feet. Uh, down just east of Tunnel Number 1, up above Caliente, I'm not going to go down there, that uh, location. I don't even think I can get in there without four-wheel drive. But uh, about 200 feet of that fill, just the other side of Tunnel 1, was liquefied and slid down into the creek there and those tracks were uh, also suspended. You see in this picture here. And uh, I just wanted to bring that up. Also, uh, forgot to mention at the beginning that this earthquake was the most powerful earthquake in the United States since the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco. And the July 7, 2018 earthquake that shook Trona and Ridgecrest was a 7.2, so it wasn't quite as big. Um, also, uh, the damage to property really was just, was really kind of localized right here around Bealville, but there was a lot of damage to some structures in Tehachapi and Arvin, and uh, that was mostly confined to brick buildings and the uh, wood frame buildings and concrete structures, some of the newer structures are built of uh, concrete and rebar, like the Santa Fe Hotel, which you see in this picture. Uh, withstood the earthquake just fine. But anyway, uh, I want to thank you for coming along on my little trip. I hope you enjoyed it. I know um, a lot of people, if you're not from uh, California or this area in California actually or you're not a, a rail fan who knows about this most people don't even know about the 1952 earthquake and the damage it did to the Southern Pacific Railroad and to Tehachapi and Arvin. All right well um, as usual if you have any ideas uh, things you'd like to see let me know in the comments below or shoot me an email motorpool at 59 at gmail.com like share subscribe and uh, click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content, and we will see you all later.